Hey everybody, Brian Kane here. That little green guy that you just saw, Yoda, one of the best coaches of all time. First thing he says, always we do what cannot be done. Always we do what we think cannot be done. I mean, the only limitations you have are the limitations you put on yourself. I mean, we all know the story of Roger Bannister, guy who ran the first four minute mile. Everyone said it couldn't be done, it's physically impossible. No one can run a four minute mile. The heart will stop, the brain will explode, the lungs will collapse, it can't be done. Well, when Roger Bannister does it, first person ever, within one year, about 20 other people had run a four minute mile. And today the record is somewhere in the mid threes. You see, once someone breaks down that mental barrier, Everyone else will plow through. Who's going to be the first one to do what cannot be done? Whether that's making the varsity, whether that's winning a state championship, a national championship, whatever it is, it can be done. Other things that Yoda says. We must unlearn what we have learned. And I think that's key for the process because with the process, we're talking about the things that we can control versus the things that we can't. We're talking about the process as a means to get that desired end result. And unfortunately, what I see most people doing is they get stuck focusing on the goal, the end result, the outcome, the win. Right? We got to win. A win is what's important now. And what's important now is the process of what are we doing this pitch, this shift, this play. You know, people also talk about, well, I can, I can control winning. One thing I'm going to challenge you through this presentation today is you can't control winning. Winning is a byproduct of doing things the right way. So you don't control winning, you control how you play. Now, if you play well, you give yourself the better chance to win. And Skip Bertman, the athletic director at LSU, when he was coaching the baseball team at LSU in the 90s and won four national championships, says this says anytime you play only four things can happen you can play well and win you can play well and lose you can play lousy and win and you can play lousy and lose he says the law of average it's like if I throw this pencil in the air right gravity pulls it down law of average is true just like the law of gravity and it says the law of average if you play well you give yourself the best chance to win now there's no guarantees there's no guarantees you give yourself the best chance to win and as you're going to find out from George St. Pierre and a number of other athletes, the best team never wins. Best team never wins. I'm going to challenge you to change your perspective on that. I'm going to challenge you to think about all the times in athletic history. Miracle on Ice, 1980, the Russians were way better than the U.S. Super Bowl, 2008, I think it was. The Patriots and the Giants. Patriots are undefeated. Giants beat them in the Super Bowl. Who was better that year? The Patriots. George St. Pierre, Matt Sarah. Matt Sarah knocks him out, 11 to 1 underdog. Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson. You see, the best athlete never wins. It's always the athlete who plays the best or who fights the best. Let's take a look at George. So you heard it there from one of the world's best fighters. The best athlete never wins. It's always the one who plays the best. That's the process. You see, Yoda also says, do or do not, there is no try. Do or do not, there is no try. Well, you either make a commitment or you don't. You either get out of bed and do the weight training or you don't. You either eat the right way or you don't. Now, I think sometimes you can do everything right as a part of the process and still not get the end result that you're looking for. But did you do what you were supposed to do? And that's what Yoda's saying. Is you either do work the process or you don't work the process. Well, let's talk a little bit about what the process is. Now, take a look at the staircase I've developed here. And in this staircase, imagine putting your goal at the top of that staircase. Let's say national championship. Well, if you see the steps leading up to that, let's break it down. What do we need to do? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? Well, to win the national championship, we've got to play well. You know, we've got to, we've got to win 55 games, whatever it is. Okay, so we've got to get to Omaha. We've got to get to Omaha. We've got to win a super regional, win a regional, probably win conference. Or we've got to win our conference tournament to get into a regional. Now, what do we need to do to win that, those games? Well, we've got to play well. What do we have to do to play well? Well, we've got to prepare well. And to prepare well, we've got to practice with a game-like mentality. 
We've got to have routines in place. We've got to be able to find a way to trust ourselves and play in that present moment. You're choosing our routine to play one pitch at a time. And if we do that, everything else takes care of itself. So the focus is not on Omaha. The focus is not on winning games. The focus is on right here, right now, present moment, this pitch, controlling what you can control. That's sticking to the process. When people talk about playing one pitch, one shift, one down at a time, one possession at a time, they're talking about the process. A huge component of the process is controlling what you can control. So we draw, we draw two circles, as you see here. In our bigger circle is what we call the circle of no control. And the smaller circle is our circle of control. Now you look at all the things that we have no control over in sport that if we choose to think about is going to negatively affect our performance. So you can throw weather, you can throw coaches, you can throw fans, you can throw media, you can throw field conditions, you can throw other team, you can throw my teammates. You can put all those things in there. You can even put, as a baseball example, or softball example, getting the hitter out. See, a lot of pitchers think I get hitters out. Your goal is not to get hitters out. Hitters get themselves out. You make a pitch. When you make a pitch, the hitter gets themselves out. So let's focus on making a pitch, not getting this hitter out. Because as you all know, you can make a great pitch and give up a base hit. You can make a lousy pitch and get an out. So let's focus on making the pitch. That's what we can control. As a hitter, can you control getting hits? No. How many times have you squared up a ball, hit it right at somebody, and you're out? Quality contact, but you're out. Happens all the time. So we talk about the goal of a hitter is a quality at-bat. The goal of a pitcher is a quality pitch. And we do that throughout the entire game. Well, what can we control? We can control our ape, our attitude, our process, right? How we choose to play one pitch at a time our perspective, how we choose to see things, our preparation, our energy, our effort, and our emotions. You control those things, everything else takes care of itself. So get immersed in that present moment, get immersed in that next 200 feet, get immersed in controlling what you can control, get immersed in that process, and let the end result take care of itself. general philosophy for us is to go out there and challenge hitters within the strike zone you know to go out there and uh, you know pitch your game and go right after hitters and if you go out there and you stay within the strike zone and challenge hitters and get themselves out you know you're gonna have more success and you're gonna stay in the game longer I think the interesting thing is that you know as far as mechanics goes everybody does things a little bit different and, and that's one thing that the coaches here are you know definitely aware of you know some places they try to clone all the pitchers or clone all the hitters well the bottom line is you know everybody's got their own way to do it and as long as your way works that's fine to do with it you know most teams say it but but few teams actually play this way and it's about going pitch to pitch doing the little things to build up it's about the process not about the result all right with Kurt Suzuki Zook huge I mean, huge feeling right now you guys are giant into imagery but could you have ever imagine this right now um no you know once we start the season off really slow but you know I knew this team could do it all along we just stepped with the process worked really hard day in and day out and you know, we didn't press one bit. We just came out and had good, th uh, good thoughts that things were going to happen and uh, things turned around for us. Talk about not pressing. You come up to the plate with a huge spot when you did. You have not had a great series up to that point, but you picked a great spot to come out. What are you feeling when you're walking up there? Oh, you know, I just went up there and said, you know, I'm taking good ABs the whole College World Series and I had nothing to show for. But I just went up there with good thoughts happening and said, you know, this is my box. I own this. I'm, gonna, I'm the man. I want to be the man in this situation. That's what I came to Cal State Fullerton for. I know I just let it happen. Jason Winston has been so huge for you this entire time. What were you thinking after that first inning? And were you surprised he was so strong the rest of the way? Well, you know, it's, it was expected to have a little nervousness, you know? He's been solid for us all season. I you know we weren't going to let two runs beat us, especially with that guy on the, on the bump. He's been, we've been riding him and the rest of the pitching staff all year, and we just came out and scored three runs. That's all we needed. So congratulations, man. Have fun. Thank you. Guys, back to you.
All right, Kyle. Augie Garrido, head baseball coach at the University of Texas, all-time winningest college baseball coach. And also Kurt Suzuki, current catcher for the Oakland Athletics when he was at Cal State Fullerton, talking about his approach and the team's approach to what they had to do when they were 15 and 16 to turn it around and become national champions in 2004. Kurt was the 2004 National Player of the Year. So as you can see, the best of the best are focusing on the process. Let's take a look at the first paragraph from Nick Saban, National Championship Coach at LSU for their football program. Let's take a look at the first quote from his book, How Good Do You Want to Be? Saban says, becoming a champion is not an easy process. And in 2003, the season was a great example of how it's done. It's done by focusing on what it takes to get there and not on getting there. It's done by focusing on what it takes to get there and not on getting there. That's selling out to the process. My challenge for you is with your team, with your inner circle, what is the process that you need to focus on? How can you evaluate the process? Can you give points? Can you come up with some type of award system that emphasizes and rewards people who work the process? Emphasizing quality at bat average over batting average. Emphasizing quality pitch average over ERA. And I'm here to tell you that if your quality at bats go up, so will your batting average. And if your quality pitches go up, your ERA will go down. So stick to the process. Take it one pitch at a time, one shift at a time whatever your game is, and we'll be talking to you soon about finding that right perspective and developing your philosophy.